What motivates us to follow our dreams? Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm so glad that you've joined me for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV, where we learn how to bring our greatest passions to life. My first guest is Heather Hart Sussman, a Canadian children's author known for her lovable Nana and Noni book series. For years, she covered the exciting Hollywood scene as a TV host on E! Entertainment and writer and editor for The Hollywood Reporter and TV Guide. Heather, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great having you here. Now, I mean, you had an exciting career in L.A. covering uh, Hollywood mm -hmm. uh, and entertainment. Uh, the tables have turned for you now. I mean, you, you're getting interviewed uh, quite a bit. It's good. I, I, at least I know the setup and I know how it works and I'm very comfortable on, on both ends of the camera. And so it's, it's, um, I'm happy to be here and talk about the books because that's where I'm at now. Now let's talk about your career as a celebrity journalist. Sure. Um, you know, so you spent many years in, in Los Angeles um, in that whole sort of Hollywood scene, an exciting scene. It's, it's something many young women dream about doing, and you did it. How'd you get your start? Uh, I started in advertising in Montreal as soon as I'd graduated from university. And uh, right from there, I had an instinct to go to Los Angeles. I was covering the MTV Awards for Elle Quebec. I used to freelance on the side on the weekends when I wasn't writing the advertising slogans and, 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 and taglines. And I, I fell in love with L.A. when I went there. And uh, on another occasion when I um, went back to cover something, I started looking for jobs on the side. And I got a job at The Hollywood Reporter as a, as a reporter for the International Edition, which is a Wednesday edition, and as an editor there. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of Canadians um, who are living in L.A. presently would like to flock away from L.A., but you loved it. You went down. What was it about L.A. that you loved? Well, I think Canadians have the American dream down pat. The Americans don't really have the hunger for it as much because they're in it, and they can't see the forest for the trees. And we, sitting on a little bit on the outside, see that Hollywood thing, and I wanted it. I wanted to be in the mix. Um, and from The Hollywood Reporter, I... Uh, I uh, wrote a gossip column for a friend who had AIDS, unfortunately, and he was dying, and he said, please don't tell anybody, but just ghostwrite my column. And I did that for years until he passed away, and then when he passed, I said, you know, I've been writing it for, well, he's been ill, and they said, well, then you've got the job. Well, they knew that somebody else had been writing it because I couldn't exactly get his voice, but from there I did TV. So um, uh, I, I met a lot of Canadians, including this sweet friend of mine, and my husband, all Canadians who came down, and there's a big Canadian contingent down there, and they're the, they're the most ambitious, I find. All along this journey, mm -hmm. um, you had brewing um, in your psyche and in your, your, your body, you, uh, children's series. Yeah, you know, I was series. always a writer. I wrote as a, an eight-year-old to get through my parents' divorce. I've journaled, I've written poetry, and I continue to always write, even if it's a gratitude journal or anything. I'm constantly writing. Um, I took classes at UCLA on how to write children's books, even when I didn't know if I would have a career in it. And it was a perfect time when I came to Canada, no longer doing TV, and not so interested in, in doing it anymore. And trying, I wanted to try something new, and I had, so now I had the tools, I had taken the classes. And it wasn't, people think I write children's books because I have children and I'm sort of writing them for them, and that's absolutely not true. I love the genre. I love writing a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end in 1,500 words or less. It's a challenge, it's a mathematical problem that I love to solve. Now your first book, um, you've got the two series, uh -huh. and the Nana series, mm -hmm. and the Noni series. Yeah, so many let's, ends. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the inspiration. Sure. Um, Nana's Getting Married is about a little boy who just can't get over the fact that his grandmother's getting married, and the inspiration for that was my son, uh, who when my mother got married, said, Nana's, uh, grandmas don't get married. And I said, yes, they do. What, what makes you think they wouldn't get married? Don't they deserve love too? She's a young 60-something, and she should be free to keep, get married. And uh, I thought uh, that would be a neat idea for a book, a boy who just doesn't, a grumpy little boy, uh, who just doesn't get why people of a certain age uh, need love. or they, it's, it's not in the archetype. She doesn't knit him socks and turtleneck sweaters anymore. Now she's going on dates, and he's befuddled. 
She's in, Grandma's she, having a good time. Grandma's having a good time. People live longer, um, and uh, people, you know, are widows or widowers or there's divorce, and sometimes people get a second and a third go around, and that's okay. So that's what that book is about. A little bit of blended families. And uh, there's another book in the Nana series? Yes, the second book right. was uh, Here Comes Hortense, where right. the husband now of Nana, because they get married in the end and the little boy approves. Uh, throughout, the, throughout the book he has not approved, and at the end of course he approves uh, for a variety of reasons. And uh, in the second book, uh, Hortense is, is the husband's granddaughter, and so she's introduced, so the blended family sort of grows, and he has yet someone else to contend with and get used to. And so the third in the series is Nana's Summer Surprise, which just came out. And uh, now he's getting along with the girl, but she comes to spend the summer at the cottage, and she's grown, and she's not interested in the things he thought they were going to do together. And he's once again grumpy about it until they uh, figure out something they can do together, which is Nana's Summer Surprise. They surprise Nana with something. Now, there's uh, in your, now, we, then you've got the Noni series. Yes. Uh, and the one book um, that really, uh, really caught my attention uh, because of the, the, the subject matter was Noni Says No. Yeah. Um, and this is something that uh, many women have a hard time saying no. We're people pleasers. Perhaps we're not making decisions quickly enough or, or good decisions for us. Uh, you took this subject and you turned this into a book. Yeah. And it's popular. Yes, it is. It got nominated for uh, an award here in Ontario. Um, yes, I, I was the one who couldn't say no, and I took that inspiration from my own childhood. So the character, Noni, is you. Definitely. Okay, got I, it. I couldn't say no then. I am 48 now, and I still can't say no. Um, I'm the first one to uh, agree to put on a fundraiser at my kid's school if I get called in the hallways or, or somebody taps me on the shoulder, can I drive their kids somewhere? Sure, like I want to be liked. So I say that and oftentimes it gets me in trouble. Uh, I double book. I don't show up somewhere. I try not to do that anymore, but as a kid I did it all the time. I made play dates with two people who would live on the other side of the city from each other, not know each other. One lived near me and one was from school, so she lived somewhere else. And I'd say I'd be there. and. You're not a people pleaser when you don't show up to one of them. Somebody's going to be angry. And I got myself into pickles so often from not being able to say no. And in the end, I wasn't liked. I was disliked. It was exactly the opposite of what I wanted. Uh, so I thought that if uh, kids could learn to say no a little earlier, and there are great ways to say no. I wish I had the tools. I wish I'd known that you could say no, uh, you know, no thank you. And that's fine. That would be okay. So what happens to this character then in the book? What, well, what she, does she learn? She has a bossy friend who mm. just isn't a bully per se, but she, you know, we treat people how to treat us. So she pushes and sees how far she can go with Noni, and Noni wants to say no, but she says yes, and even she gets as far as going, mm, yeah, okay, like she just can't say it. It's almost physically impossible, and she gets, uh, things happen to her like, her friend wants to give her a new hairdo and she's wielding scissors and of course Noni really, really wants to say no and she says yes and her, she has this beautiful long hair and it's all chopped off, all crooked and, 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 uh, and awful. So she, uh, uh, those are the kinds of things that happen to people who can't say no. Now Heather, we're just going to take a quick break and it means sure. that it's my good to know minute and I know you've got a great success tip. My success tip is definitely follow your intuition because it's never led me astray. People will have other ideas for you. They'll have ideas of what's best for you. And I think you listen, even if it's your parents, even if it's your best friend, listen to that little voice inside you because you know. And you'll ne it'll never lead you astray. It has never led me astray. And that's good to know. And thanks for that. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay where you are. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm speaking with Heather Hart Sussman. She's a children's author. So what's the feedback that you're getting from young girls that are reading the book? Yeah, they really like it. They, they say, well, you know, uh, I always ask them, why do some of us have trouble saying no? And they say, we want to be liked, we want, we're too shy to say no. Um, a variety of reasons. They, they give the best reasons. I don't have them on the top of my head, but they kids just, are great. They're the best. Yeah, they're the best. And I said, well, if you know, if somebody came to you and said they wanted to cut your hair or poke your eyes out, uh, and you said no because you really don't want that to happen, uh, and they got mad at you, do you really want a friend like that? And that's really the bottom line. You, we don't want friends who we can't say no to once in a while, and they can't say, okay, if that's your decision, that's fine with me. I still love you. 
you know. So that really is uh, the lesson to the kids when I'm speaking to them. And I read all over Toronto and, and beyond. <laughs> I've read in Winnipeg and all over the place. And uh, yeah, the, my, the, the main thing that the girls latch on to when I'm speaking, and even a lot of the boys too, because they have peer pressure too, is uh, we don't want to have friends who we can't uh, sometimes just say no to when it doesn't feel right with us. Now, your books, um, the Noni series mm -hmm. and the Nana series, are you finding that the message um, translates uh, outside North America with kids in, in other cultures? South Korea, it, it, it was printed and, and it's uh, done very well. And I think some of the Asian cultures uh, are very polite. And I think Noni in particular is, is uh, making that extra effort to be polite at her own expense. And so I think that resounded in, in Korea per se. I don't even know if it's sold in other Asian countries, but I know in Korea it hit a nerve. And they did some, some um, subsidiary materials. They had workbooks. You know, how do you say no? What would you do if? Which is a wonderful thing. So yes, and it's also translated into Danish and French. So I think it sells in a lot of places. And it, by definition, then I think it resounds because it wouldn't sell otherwise. Now, with your, your writing process, uh, these books didn't just happen overnight. No. Um, in fact, when the kids ask me when I started writing, I say, or how long it took me to write this book, for example, I say, well, you could say it took me two weeks, or you could say it took me 40 years. Because when the idea was planted in my head, I kind of knew I can't say no. This is something I need to do something about, personally. Didn't know I was going to write a book about it, but that idea brewed in my head, and I consider that part of the writing process. And as I said, I'm 48, so 40 years later, I, I wrote about it, but it had been brewing since I was about eight years old. Well, Heather, I have really uh, enjoyed this time with you, getting to know you, and you. Uh, more about uh, your writing process and your books and, and your experience in L.A. as a celebrity journalist. Thank you for being here and sharing your story. Thanks for having me. Well, I've been speaking with Heather Hart Sussman, children's author and a former celebrity journalist. Well, for more information about Extraordinary Women TV and my guests, and to watch past episodes, I invite you to visit the website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. And I'd love to stay in touch with you. Join me on Twitter for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, we can connect at Extraordinary Women TV. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.